Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Is there an echo? Echo, echo. How about now? I closed up my um my web browser too to make sure there wasn't a lot of uh Okay. Um come on and uh come on as a um and talk with me and see if there's still an echo. Okay. Are you going to join in? Okay, let's see. All right, hopefully there's no echo. echo, echo. Okay. I think there's, I an, think echo. there's an echo now. <laughs> yeah, it may be because I'm joined in. All right, it's, so I'm <laughs> back again. So it's something with our connection. So um, uh, the only other thing is you can call me in on your um, cell phone or on some type of phone and we I can be through the phone and then you can just go live. <laughs> I can't do, I it, can't on do it on my computer monitor. monitor huh? You can do it on your Mac. Yep. You can go yep. live on your Mac. That would be, that great. Would be great. But you can um yeah, you can you can go live as long as it's on Chrome. Not Safari, but I you can't still, you can't um have me in. I don't think it allows you to add people in, or I don't know how to add people in. So maybe, you maybe can, if you um, um, well, we should test we should this test first. this first. How do you want me, to do, want me to do it so we can move ahead? Just go ahead and do it by yourself. You don't need me. <laughs> okay, you got okay. You got to start being questions though. Okay, so I'm logged off. All right, bye bye. All right, bye, -bye. <laughs> Is there still an echo? Can you tell me if there's an echo now, Rochelle? Is there any feedback? It was Sandra's fault. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so Let's dive in. I thought it would be um, important to start off with something <laughs> to, to start off with something that um, I hear a lot from people who uh, are especially beginners. But I get this from people who have tried to start on their journey or even stop. But usually it's a it's a beginner that gives me this. And what it is, is that they don't feel like working out is fun. So they'll say, well, you know, it, it seems like work to them. So I said, well, what can we do to where working out is not a burden um, or it doesn't feel like a job? It doesn't feel like uh, it's something somebody's making you do. So I did a little research and in the course of my own experience, the one thing that I like to do is I like to mix up my, my workout routine, right? And th these aren't going to go in any particular order. I have um, some copious notes that I took. But I, I mix up my workout routine. So about every four to six weeks, I'll switch things up. I might try some different exercises. Um, instead of doing a flat bench, I might go to an incline bench, or instead of using a barbell, I may do, use a dumbbell, or I may use pulleys, um, or something of that nature. That's another thing. See, I was going to get to that, having a partner. Rochelle said having a partner. Inviting a friend is always better 
if you aren't uh, into a routine. But even if you are, like the times I get to work out with another person, it's like, wow. But I've been doing this for so long now, and it's a part of my job that it's like, yeah, it's hard to find reliable people, though, Rochelle. It's, it really is. People say, man, I'm going to come work out with you. I can't tell you how many times I've had guys inbox me or send me a text, and they'll say, man, when do you go work out? And I'll tell them when I go work out, exactly what time, and they never show up. So... <laughs> If you're going to if you're going to pick a workout partner, make sure they're committed. Just like with anything else, um, if it's a prayer partner or any anything, if you're going to go somewhere with anybody, make sure that they're timely as well. Because then, if they're not, you'll be tempted not to go if you're relying on them too heavily, and you don't want anybody else to have control over your fitness. So even if you do have a workout partner. You have to make sure that you're committed to going whether they go or not, whether they go or not. So that has to be the first thing. Um, but, yeah, mixing up your workouts, that could mean, um, if, if, for instance, if a person goes for walks, that could be your workout. Like my father is over 80 years old. I think he's about to turn 83. But he walks two to three miles every day weather permitting because he lives in Colorado. So as long as it's not snowing or too much ice outside, he goes for a walk. Well, if that's your workout routine, take a different route. You know, see some different things that you don't see when you're driving around. Uh, we get spoiled out here in California. You know, I ain't gonna lie. I don't like to walk. <laughs> I'll drive three blocks to the store. Why do I believe people flake when it comes to exercise? Their mind wasn't made up. Just like with anything else, their mind wasn't made up. Um, I believe that quite often they will talk themselves out of it. At the time that you guys have the conversation, everybody's like, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, especially around the first of the year. But then when it comes time to go to the gym, they flake. And they won't call you either. They'll just not show up at the gym. <laughs> right? You could call them and they're going to send you straight to voicemail. Right? So they'll talk themselves out of it. Um, one of my notes is to have a made up mind. Just like with anything else that takes any type of effort. Working out takes effort uh, to willingly put yourself through physical pain. Because there's some pain that comes with it right you have to be willing to put yourself through this pain and so you have to have a made up mind that's the first part about anything that's going to take some effort that mimics people's yes it does yes accountability and commitment is necessary most definitely um zandra that's an excellent point because one of the things that i uh, share with people when i'm led to is that my walk in fitness my fitness journey mimics or mirrors my walk with Christ. Uh, I don't have an option but to show up. I don't know what else to do but to show up. And so my relationship um, with my fitness is the same as my relationship with God. I have to show up. It's not, um, it's not optional anymore for me. That's just how I live. And often we hear the cliche, uh, that fitness is a lifestyle, right? Just like our walk with God is a lifestyle. That's all we know how to do now. I would not know how to function if I did not um, have my connection with God. I would not know how to function if I was not working out. And so that is um, that keeps me committed because I don't have another person that, that says, hey, Keith, did you go to the gym? Uh, did you work out this week? Nobody questions me about that. I think partially because it's assumed now. But if I skipped a week, I wouldn't get any questions about it unless I saw my nutritionist. Then she would ask me how things are going. <laughs> but she's about the only one who's going to ask me about it. Um, now I got Zandra. If I start skipping, Zandra going to question me about why I'm skipping the gym. But, you know, really, it's, it's, it's really about my own commitment and being self-motivated. Um, so let me get back to uh, mixing it up is a way 
to make your workouts more fun. The other thing I will recommend is listening to music or listening to some podcasts while you work out. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, if I'm lifting weights, I'll put on some gospel rap. I, I got to have something that's going to keep me pumped up. But quite often, if I'm just doing cardio, um, if I'm just walking on the treadmill or if I, if I uh, go walking around the park or what have you, I'm going to get to that question. Um, if I'm just walking around the park or whatever or if I'm on the elliptical, I'll listen to my uh, Bible, right? Um, I'm not too preoccupied with form or anything like that, so I can actually listen to the Word while I'm doing my cardio. For you, it might be a podcast about something that you're interested in. It may be hair and makeup. It might be politics, whatever it is that you're interested in. It might be, You might listen to a sermon or somebody or some motivational speaker. That's something else that you can do to keep your mind off of keeping going while you're doing your cardio. Um, Zondra asked, how important are accountability partners? For me, when it comes to my fitness, I really don't need an accountability partner at this stage. Um, I have too much riding on my level of fitness now to where it's not even a question of whether or not I'm going to go. But for somebody who is starting out, it might be very important uh, to have somebody that's going to call you or text you and say, hey, remember, we're going to the gym. We're going to the gym on Wednesday, right? Somebody that's going to confirm with you. We're going, we're going walking on Thursday. We're going to Pilates on Friday. We're going to uh, yoga on Saturday, right? We're going. You're not going to back out on me. Um, if you have that person calling you and checking you, you're welcome, Rochelle. Then that is going to be uh, tremendous for you. You guys, uh, the word says that iron sharpens iron. And um, it's not just in the things of God. It could be in anything. It could be in fitness. It could be in writing. If you have a somebody, a writing partner or a journaling partner, it's wonderful to have that person to um, to bounce ideas off of. How have you turned your fitness into a career? For me, it was somewhat of a. Um, a progression, a gradual progression. Um, and what I mean by that is it wasn't my idea immediately. I just I just really wanted to get back in shape. I wanted to feel better. Um, I guess the origin of it was when I was in my mid-30s, mid to late 30s, and I started having these little back pains because I had been in and out of the gym. And the Lord revealed to me that every time I'm out of the gym, my core gets weak. And that's when I start getting these little tweaks in my back. So once I got that revelation, I, I made up my mind that I was not going to uh, get out of shape anymore because I felt like I was too young for that to be happening to me. So I started working out or what have you. Um, but then I wanted to do some fitness, fitness modeling to supplement my income. So I had to get in better shape than what I was. And then I happened to, um, well, not happened to because I don't believe in accidents, but I met a uh, lady here named Maggie who's a nutritionist and she started giving me little tips and stuff like that because she saw that I was committed to the gym which is another thing once people see your commitment they'll start offering you advice they'll start offering information to you I'm talking about educated people who had to pay for their education pay to learn these things they'll start offering you information when they see your level of commitment and so once I started um, taking that information and applying it then I started to even get in better shape, nutritional information. Um, and then, uh, God spoke to you about your temple. Do you believe God is talking to others and they're not listening? I'm going to get to that. Um, so I started applying that information and I, and I saw how good a shape I was, I was getting in. And so I said, you know what? I, I think I can compete because I saw some of the guys competing. So I, I, just, I made the decision to compete. You can probably see my little trophy in the background by the TV. On my dresser, I won that first place trophy in my first competition. And once I did that, shortly after that, um, I had a strong desire to be 
in uh, one of those superhero films. It could be the you know Black Panther two, any Marvel, DC universe, or what have you. And um, I felt like if I was already in that type of shape, then I had a better opportunity to do it. And also, my heart was moved to start reaching out to people. People started reaching out to me, asking me all types of questions about how I transformed myself and developed these different habits or what have you, people that saw me before. And so it, it got orchestrated. It just evolved that way. Um, and I, I just love it now. Um, do you believe God is talking to others and they're not listening? Let's see. If so, why? I do believe God is talking to people. I've talked to people who have said, you know, God reveals certain things to them. And if it's not directly, he will use your doctor to tell you things, to give you information. Uh, he will send people to you to say, hey, here's how you can improve in this particular area. It may not even necessarily be a, a, a weight issue because there are people in poor health who um, are not overweight. I'm, I'm thinking of somebody right now, um, really, really slim person, and they've started to change their habits, and they're going to the gym on a regular basis now, but I remember when they were still eating chitlins, and <laughs> the doctor told them they could not eat like that anymore. Rochelle, nice, so it started with your ego. <laughs> partially, partially. I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt my back, really. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I guess in a way it did. Um, who wants to be walking around on a cane, you know, in their 40s? And I know people who are. Um, but let's see. Yeah, but God is talking. Yeah, chitlins. He was eating chitlins, Andra. He was eating chitlins. And uh, what else? Pork rinds and just all kinds of things he wasn't supposed to be eating. Um, his, his cholesterol levels were really high and he wasn't supposed to. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rochelle. Yeah, he was eating chitlins, though. But he's, he's changed because when he went back to the doctor, the, the last time, the doctor told him, look, you have to change this about yourself or you're going to die early. That's what it came down to. And uh, many times people are faced with life and death when it comes to their health, and they won't change. And they end up dying early. Um out of their rebellion. You ask why, it's, it's rebellion, uh, ultimately. Um, you have to care enough about yourself. And even not about yourself, I tell people quite often, if they have a wife or a husband and you have children, you have to care enough to live, not only for you, but for them. Those are people who are depending on you being around, especially if you're the breadwinner in the house. Those are people that love you. So why not take care of yourself so you can be there for them? Um, you, can, you will die prematurely if you don't take care of your temple. That's a fact. Um, let's see, what else? Did I, did I get everything? I think so. So my other thing was, we, which we've been touching on, is bring a, fit, bring a friend. And so you can motivate each other if you have a friend. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. Thank you for, for tuning in. Um, bring a friend. Right. You can motivate each other. It's, it's time for fellowship. You can talk about stuff. Right. Um, it's safer, especially if you're going for walks and you're more likely to continue exercising if you have a friend with you. All right. Because it can it, it, it strengthens your commitment and it strengthens your resolve. OK. Let's see. Other fun tips. Oh, this will be a good one. I see people do this all the time. I don't necessarily do it, but when you um, accessorize, right, make, that, that, that helps to make it fun. When you accessorize, when you bring hand weights with you and things of that nature, or you might have a weight belt to make it more challenging once you get to that stage, um, that helps. Um, mm, here's a critical one. Set some reasonable goals set some reasonable goals. If you're just starting out on your fitness walk, one of your goals is maybe you walked two blocks the other day. So your goal next week is, you know what, I'm going to walk four blocks. Then it could be six blocks. And then you say, well, you know what, I'm going to try and walk a mile. Set some reasonable goals. 
when you're first starting out, your goal shouldn't be, well, I'm going to look like Superwoman next week. That's not a reasonable goal. Okay. Um, I touched on changing your workouts every six weeks or so. Um, try some new exercises. Uh, get in a class with other people. If you can't fr find a friend to go with, get in a class. Um, take a, uh, a hit training class or take a kickboxing class. Any class. I mean, in Los Angeles, Hollywood, West Hollywood, there's nowhere in Southern California where you can't find a good uh, fitness class. How do I handle the haters and naysayers? I, I usually ignore them. <laughs> For me, that's the best thing is just ignore them. That's um, that's like white noise to me. I had so, uh, and it helps if you've been dealing with it a, for a long time. I, I've had, I've dealt with jealousy and haters, probably you know, ever since I was a child. I believe it or not, I used to have curly hair, but it's all gone. So it was always somebody hating about something. But um, you just have to ignore them. That I don't even address them. Don't I mean, don't even comment them. Just if your mind's made up, just keep it pushing. Identify who they are and keep it pushing. That's the best thing to do. Um, be committed. If you're committed, because those people I believe uh, are there to um, to strengthen you, right? You can allow them to throw you off through their discouragement and hate, but if you use it for what it's supposed to be to strengthen you, then it'll come out. If you live with them, that's all right, that's that's bad. <laughs> if you live with them, you have to ignore them. You you know you may have to address the issue and just tell them, look, if you don't have anything positive to say about my journey, then I would prefer you not even talk about it. Don't don't come to me with negativity. You have to address it. Um, or you can just you know let them see your walk. That's that's the. Your actions speak louder than anything you could tell them. I guess it depends on how contentious of a person you're dealing with. So that's what I would do um, personally. I haven't had that issue with the person that I live with being the hater, but um, that could be bad. Um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to touch on this martial arts. Martial arts is great exercise if you have that type of mobility. I take a karate class right now, and I also uh, take jujitsu. It's a totally different type of training. A um, lot of kicking in the karate, different types of punches, different types of movements than weight training. Jujitsu is way different than weight training. You could be a really strong person in the weight room, and when it's time to get on that mat, it's just different training. So I guess in even say, in saying that, find what works for you because martial arts will keep you in shape. That will improve your cardiovascular uh, level. That will improve your metabolism um, and increase your strength. But I do believe at some point you have to incorporate resistance training if you want to get in peak condition um, and, and strengthen your muscles and strengthen your bones and things of that nature. Plus. Some of the martial arts can be kind of hard on the body if, um, you know, over a period of time. Um, this one is big for me. You talked, to, you asked me about haters. The best thing you can do with the hater in addition to just ignoring them is to be your own cheerleader. Quite often the hater will try to be discouraging in the things that they say. They'll speak things. And they'll try to speak things into your life that you don't want in your life. So you have to counteract that by speaking positively over yourself, speaking the word over yourself, speaking those promises that God made you over yourself. And so tell yourself that you will accomplish your goals. Tell yourself that you are strong enough to do what you need to do to get in shape. Tell yourself that you are consistent. Tell yourself that you are committed and that you will remain committed in spite of what other people are saying. Um, tell yourself that you're going to have fun at the gym, right? 
instead of saying, man, I don't feel like going or man, I don't feel like doing whatever type of exercise that it is that you're engaged in. Tell yourself that, you know what, I'm looking forward to this. Yes, speak life into yourself. Speak life over your training. Speak life over your exercise routine. Whatever it is that you're engaged in, speak life into it because the hater is speaking the opposite. Um, something else that's critical too is that, uh, well, let me go back and touch on that again. Whatever you speak, that's what's going to come to pass. It's not what other people speak. It's more so of what you speak, what you're telling yourself on the inside, the self-talk. Um, one thing that's critical, and it's not um, isolated to any sex, it's not male or female, it's not, um, it's not a color thing at all, it crosses gender line and racial lines, everything, is comparing ourselves to one another. And when it, especially in Southern California, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, this is pretty much the fitness capital, fitness capital of the world. Because of all the actors here, all the models here, uh, sports people. I mean, we got so many sports teams, you can't even, we probably have more sports team than any other place. Maybe Texas is comparable, maybe New York, I don't know. But California has a lot of sports teams, a lot of actors, a lot of models. And so we see these people walking around. And that's on top of the, uh, the things that we see on social media now. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, the magazines, the people on TV. Our minds have been conditioned to believe that beauty comes in a certain package, right? And so if you want to be beautiful or if you want to be a, a handsome guy, you have to fit into that package that um, Hollywood has presented to you. And when I say Hollywood, I mean that in the Hollywood look, right? We all know what that look is, the, the magazine look. And it's nothing wrong with you having that as a goal if you're not already there. But Understand that that took time. That took a lot of time. It took an investment and it took a long commitment. And so if that's what you're comparing yourself to, if you're not solid in who you are, if you really don't know who you are, that could be discouraging. So I really choose just to be the best me that I can be. I don't compare myself to the guys who are on the magazines or the guys I see on TV or whatever. God bless them. You know, they've worked hard for those physiques or what have you. But I have to be happy with who I am, where I am in my own journey on this particular day. I don't have yesterday anymore. Tomorrow is not here yet. I have to be happy with where I am today and be committed to doing the work that I need to do to get where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah, and, 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 uh, and you know, quite frankly, a lot of people you see on magazines, it's a lot of Photoshop too. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of Photoshop going on. Even on Instagram and Facebook, it's a lot of Photoshop going on. Now, I don't Photoshop my pictures. If you go to my Instagram, that's my that's my six pack. I worked for that. Yep, airbrushed. It's a lot of airbrushing going on. Now I can you can pretty much tell if you have an eye for it, but um, that that's even more important that you be happy, be content with where you are, and that goes hand in hand with setting attainable goals. Uh, one of the things that's so inspiring to me, and I don't want to get too far off is when I see these really, really uh, elderly people still training. Recently, I saw a video of a, um, this lady had to be close to 80 years old. She had to be. And uh, she was doing crunches with what looked to be either a 35 or a 45 pound weight. I might be exaggerating, but it was, it was bigger. It was big for her. 
and she was doing the crunching and standing up. So it was in combination. And then she would go back down. It was in combination with a squat. Now, this lady had to be committed. And it had nothing to do with her wanting to necessarily look any particular way. Because her model days was way behind. She wanted to live long and she wanted to live strong. So with that being said, I think that that should be the primary goal of any... Um, fitness routine any any type of fitness should be health and long quality of life and whatever else comes with that if you make some money off of it along the way then god bless you even more but the, I, I wish i would remember this lady's name but she was getting it in i know a lady uh personally her name is miss ruby she she um miss ruby's got to be in her 70s little bitty old thing but she gets it in she's a trainer and she competes even at her age so um and then she you know she she's in excellent shape even better than a, most young people oh this is something i've never heard before or at least i don't remember hearing it is setting a reward for yourself My reward tonight is coffee. <laughs> but setting a reward for yourself. And what I mean by that is maybe there's um, an outfit or something that you wanted to purchase, right? And after a certain, if you say, well, if I stay committed for, say, three weeks, then I'm going to treat myself to this dress I wanted or treat myself to these shoes or these pants or these slacks or whatever it is that you wanted. It doesn't have to be anything exorbitant, but it should be something that is maybe slightly frivolous, right? That you wouldn't buy on a regular basis, but have it associated with your commitment to your level of fitness. It could be an outfit. It could be a smoothie. It could be a massage or something of that nature. Have that associated with your workout routine. That was something I actually learned today. I've never done that for myself. Although I did promise myself after my contest, I said, after this contest, I'm going to go eat me a pizza. Because <laughs> I, I hadn't had a pizza in a long time. And I ate a whole pizza to myself. So that was my personal treat. And I, I felt like, you know, that was cool. That was worth it. Um, what else? Oh, journaling. Journaling is a way to keep it fun for you uh, keeping track of your workouts um, it's good to go back and look at your journey and see where you started if, especially if you include pictures include some pictures in your journaling so man that that hour went by quick I wanted to get into some of the foods that help you fight fat and I'll go through this list that I compiled today and there's research associated with this list you can look it up yourself but some of the foods that help you fight fat because I think that in America at least most people who are trying to get in shape or would like to get in shape are um, are having issues with their weight right so avocados is the first food that I have on my list um, and that's due to the monosaturated uh, fats in your body. Okay. And avocados have carotenoids in them. And it's a, a cancer fighting compound associated with color fruit, colorful fruits and veggies. So it helps you absorb those carotenoids from the other foods. Uh, bananas. Yep. Superfoods. Bananas. Berries are great to add to your list. Because the antioxidants, green teas, um, they say three cups daily. It could be up to you. Uh, whole grains like oatmeal and brown rice. Now, the oatmeal that I eat is gluten free. I don't. I'm, my whole diet is gluten free. I don't eat anything with gluten in it. Okay. Um, oatmeal, brown rice. If you like bread, you can try brown rice bread. Those are good for you. So again. If you're just joining in, these are foods that help fight fat, right? Um, fatty fish or fish oil. 
I, I get my omega threes mostly. See, there it is. You drink a cup of green tea every day. I, I drink I drink coffee. <laughs> um, fish oil supplements for the omega threes, right? This is good for heart disease to fight heart disease, help lose body fat, and something that I learned too is it helps to drop your cortisol. Cortisol is a stress-related hormone associated with fat storage. So get your fish oil, and if you don't have a fish oil sup a supplement, you want to eat some salmon, herring, or sardines. I don't get much herring and sardines, but I love salmon. Um, one tip about salmon, get the salmon in the store that doesn't have any red dye. Get fresh salmon, any frozen salmon, if you get it from like a regular grocery store. Maybe at Trader Joe's and Whole Foods, it might be different. But if you go to a regular grocery store and you buy frozen salmon, it's going to have red dye in it. So check the label. I prefer to get my salmon from the butcher's counter. And even behind there, you have to tell him, I don't want the salmon with the red dye in it. That's a sidebar. Okay. So if you can get about three and a half ounces of a fatty fish twice a week, then you'll be good in that area. Um, coffee about an hour before training is good. That helps to burn calories. I don't usually drink coffee before I go train, but I do drink some in the morning. Um, but keep it in moderation because it is caffeine. It's a stimulant. So that has to be in moderation. Um, I prefer to not have to depend on caffeine to go and work out. But yeah, the salmon with red dye, that's real. The I ask questions when I go to the meat shop. And um, he told me that. He said, this salmon has dye in it, but this one doesn't. And if you look at them, you can tell the difference. So I ask him. Um, and the last food I have, there's other foods, obviously, but I kept the list short just for time's sake. But eggs, um, for a long time, we were concerned about eggs and the uh, high level of cholesterol within the yolk. But it's just like anything else. In moderation, it has its benefits. And um, the eggs will ac actually help you increase your metabolic rate, right, By di you know, because of the digestion of the protein. And it also, you know, we say sticks to your stomach, right? But it'll give you the feeling of a uh, satisfied meal more so than a lot of other breakfast foods. Like if you just eat bagels and stuff like that. Um, that's that's not that's really not the best breakfast for you. Okay. Um, one of the other things about fish. Now this isn't a fatty fish, but it's a good fish. It's a white fish. Uh, cod. Um, check the labels on it, all this frozen packaged fish because I found out that the cod that I was buying had a massive amount of salt in it. Um, for me, in the shape that I like to stay in. I shouldn't have any more than 300 to 320 milligrams of salt a day. This particular cod had over 500 milligrams of salt for every six ounces of fish. It was very high in salt. And this is what we talked about in the beginning where people, uh, we, were, we were discussing how people were um, eating poorly in areas where they may not even realize it. And I had that revelation over an extended period of time. Um, I was drinking things like Gatorade. Now they have a sugar-free Gatorade. But when I had Gatorade, they didn't have the sugar-free Gatorade. And my nutritionist was like, don't drink that stuff. There's too much sugar in it. Um, there are a lot of things that we think are healthy, depending on what type of shape you want to be in, right? If you want to get in impeccable shape, you'll nitpick through that stuff. But there's a lot of things that we eat that aren't really that great for us. And one of the things I was um, eating was that cod. And so now I go get the fresh cod from behind the butcher's counter. Um, there's other fish that you can buy. I recommend shopping at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's. They're not paying me, but they have better food than um, in, a, in a lot of cases than your regular grocery store. But even at those places, make sure you read the labels. Um, salt and sugar are killers, especially in the black community. We eat way too much salt. 
And I think we're probably famous for making even like with Kool-Aid. We, we used to put way too much sugar in it. It was like syrup, putting, putting sugar in the Kool-Aid. Even I don't drink that now, but it, it's just crazy. So uh, read the labels. Um, I talked about starting where you are, not comparing yourself to others. Do your research. That's like basic one-on-one stuff. Uh, quite often people will tell me, well, I don't know where to start. Well, Google it. I mean, that, that's simple, right? You just do a search on it. Um, you can do a search from your phone. Get the information you need to start. Uh, hire a trainer. <clears throat> I had a conversation with a friend of mine who wanted to get in better shape. And um, most of his issue was dietary, but it was also being committed to the gym. And um, it was an opportunity for me to to witness to this individual, even though he was already a believer, but witnessing to him about his fitness and his commitment to his fitness after he saw the results of me winning my contest. And um, I said, well, why don't you just hire a trainer? He said, man, it costs a lot. I said, but you just came off of a vacation. He, he was in the Bahamas, I believe. And, uh, I said, you just came back from Puerto Rico, bro. You spent money on that, but you won't invest in your health. I heard crickets after that. So what's more important, that $300 pair of shoes or your health? Those red bottoms and that purse or your health? It's all about where your priorities are. So if you have to, get a trainer. If you need some leadership, get a trainer and do your research. Um, last but not least, I would say, check with your physician. Men are notorious for not getting physicals unless, uh, unless something goes wrong. Um, honestly, I haven't had one in two years, <laughs> but nothing's gone wrong. <laughs> I need to go. I know I need to go get a physical, but men are notorious for not going to get checkups unless something goes wrong. But if you haven't been working out, I would strongly advise you to go see a physician, even before you take any of the tips that I gave you today. Um, go see a physician before you start training and make sure that you're in good enough health, especially if you plan on doing anything vigorous. Make sure you're in good enough health to start a workout routine. All right. So I hope this has been a blessing to um to you even those of you who decide to tune in later and check out this video and um that's right zondra we won't invest in ourselves we'll we'll put money into uh a lot of different things but when it comes to our health it's kind of like you know we lay it by the wayside it's really sad but um i thank you guys for tuning in those of you who, who will tune in later and watch this video i hope that it'll be a blessing to you. <clears throat> Feel free to follow me on Facebook. I'm Keith Bossier, or you can follow me on Instagram at freed underscore fit. That's P H R E E D underscore fit. Don't forget to follow myself and Zandra at faithful 40 and fit on Instagram. And you know where she is on Facebook, obviously. And we appreciate you guys tuning in. And I'll see you next time. God bless you.